As a kid, I used to get sick a lot, but I didn't stay sick for long. I usually had my mom give me hot lemon juice and a lot of blankets, and I would sweat out the sickness very, very quickly. I was soaking wet in the morning. I take a shower, and I feel completely new. And of course, years later, I learned that people who are Rh negative have a tougher time ridding our bodies of toxins. So the toxins will come out whichever way they possibly can. And sweat is a really, really big part of that. Rory Gallagher, the, ga the guitar player, for example, was AB negative. And to this day, people are talking about his guitar, how it was eaten up by his so-called toxic sweat. So he was a heavy drinker and who knows what else he did that had to come out via his sweat. And so heat has always been to me an ally whenever I was sick. I always feel best when I'm at the beach, uh, the clean air and the heat, the combination. I feel completely like a different person when I am in that type of environment. And so when I am reading the, about the possibilities that heat can kill the coronavirus, I am all ears. Now it is obvious that India and Thailand until recently had less than a hundred cases of the coronavirus, even though in Thailand during Chinese New Year's there have been one million visitors here from China, 20,000 of them from Wuhan. Now Italy, Milan is where most of the Chinese people in Italy live and uh, I, I forgot the number, it was a six digit number of Chinese people living in Italy so there is a reason why the outbreak happened there the way that it did and I'm pretty sure that the numbers of the infected people is actually way higher than the official uh, numbers suggest so the impact the sudden impact was so strong it just became out of control immediately but Thailand it didn't happen at all at all and the only explanation that I have for that is the heat the heat that we are in and there is a difference between the heat that keeps it from transmitting and the heat that actually kills it so what I have been reading up on a little bit and researching a little bit and again that's not a doctor's advice I have to tell you that as a disclaimer what I have uh, there is more research needed basically what I have but we don't have always time to research a lot you know what I mean because people are dying um, there is a difference between temperatures preventing the transmission and temperatures killing the virus. So when it is over 70 or 80 degrees or something like that, there's a big chance that the transmission is not possible. Now India is so densely populated, you would think that just one case of coronavirus would infect the entire country within a couple of weeks. It didn't happen. Why? The places where people are, the crowded places normally, the temperatures are pretty high. And it didn't transmit. And the temperatures in India in general are very, very high. So maybe a lot of the cases of corona were taken care of because the virus was being killed. Now the sauna, of course, when you go in a sauna, it's a good chance that you may, I, I would suggest give it a try if you have any kind of symptoms give anything a try you know what I mean I mean that's what I would do actually let me say it again all of this disclaimer stuff the following and the previous within this video is only my personal opinion and it is not an advice as to what you should do it is me telling you what I would do while explaining to you why I would do it I would seek a sauna because the air waves where it is hiding where it is naturally cool that's why it's hiding there possibly
because of the temperatures. You drink hot liquids, you inhale heat. What would you have to lose? What would I have to lose if I was in that situation where I showed the symptoms? In India, it didn't spread because of the temperatures in which people, in which the large, in, in which the large crowds congregate. In Qatar, it is even harder. But come on, people! It's hot in Qatar, but people in Qatar do not hang outside. They do not have, they do not have big crowds on the train stations there. People in Qatar have a different way of life where they go from the airport into their uh, cool office building and their cool homes and every the outside temperatures don't make a difference. So I can't believe that there are people that are so dense that say, oh, but Qatar is hot. And the other one I'm getting, oh, Iran is hot. Actually, Iran is not hot. In summer, it's hot. It was, in the last couple of months, quite cold. Read up on it. Now, I would like, of course, for you guys to give me some feedback here. And again, I apologize for not having done or having had time in such short period of time to do all of the research that I could be doing. But try heat. Try heat.